if anybody has a question, I'd be more than happy to answer a question before we get started. Have a couple things I want to touch on today um, that are pertinent and going on in the industry, and we'll go from there. So if anybody has any question, just feel free to ask me. I'd be more than happy to answer it while we're waiting for people to log on. You know, we don't have a big class today or a big meeting today, but do have some stuff I wanna to talk to you guys about for sure. I'll just give it another minute. Does anybody have any questions they need answered? Not yet, but they're coming, right? <clears throat> I sent an email uh, to you, Patty, about a half hour ago, okay. just as an update. So there's interesting information on it. Okay, so I'll, I'll look that up as soon as I um, in the live and we'll go from there. And I'll be more than happy to get back to you. You know me. <laughs> oh, it's all good. I resolved it. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't have to shoot anyone? <laughs> You're not from a jail cell? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my, as you guys all know, one of my biggest things is just shoot him or just shoot yourself. Sometimes that's easier. Just shoot yourself. <laughs> be done with it. <laughs> we were playing chess yesterday. Yeah, it happens. Um, it, it's part of why we're involved in this business, you know? Sometimes we got to make sure all of our chess pieces are on the board accordingly and do our job and hope and pray that everything works out at the end. I mean, mm -hmm. all we can do is the best that we can do. Like, like you would say before, don't make me do my job. <laughs> don't make me do my job. I'm really good at it. I mean, I hate to say that, but it's the truth. I'm really good at it. Don't make me do my job. Um, one of the things I always tell tenants when I'm moving them in is from time to time I'm going to come have to come out here and inspect whether it's the water heater strapped for insurance purposes I mean it just depends on the insurance company at some point I'm going to come over to your unit and I'm telling you right now if you come home from work and find a note on your door know that I already can't get a hold of you and I had to do my job so I'm mad mm -hmm. <laughs> just know that if you see the note I'm mad mm -hmm. um don't make me do my job I'm really good at it <laughs> I told a gentleman one day after court um, and this was several years ago. He, we were walking out of the courtroom and he says to me, Hey, Patty, and he lost the eviction. And he says to me, Patty, no hard feelings, right? And I looked at him and I said, no, no hard feelings, right? And he goes, no, I don't have any hard feelings towards you at all. You were just doing your job and you warned me about that. And I said, Oh, but we're not done yet, sir. Small claims is coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In other words, that wasn't the end. <laughs> I will be back. <laughs> Just getting you out wasn't enough. Yep. Which brings me to a whole nother thing I want to do. Okay, Patty, in a three day to quit, only what do you include? We're gonna teach that class tomorrow on paving the way to evictions because let's face it, it's the drama way or the hard way when you're not going after money, you're going after whatever the direct lease violation is. So I'm doing a class on that tomorrow on paving the road to eviction. Um, has nothing to do with three day pay rent or quits. Just so you guys know, nothing to do with money at all. Hold on, I'm still letting people in, sorry. If you guys are just joining us, we're chit chatting about a three day quit notice. Here's my opinion on a three day quit notice. <laughs> Um, when you're telling them basically you can't fix this, you have three days to get out, you're not necessarily telling that to, sorry, I'm all over the place. There we go. I'm back. Um, you're not necessarily telling that just to the tenant who you're serving the notice to. You're also telling that to the judge. So as simply as I can say this, when you're doing a three-day quit notice, it has to to have all the teeth right there. Sometimes that three-day notice to quit is a typed paragraph. Sometimes it's two pages. Sometimes it's five pages. As nicely as I can say this, if it's not on that notice, it makes it extremely difficult for your attorney to argue it in court. Mm -hmm. Very simply said, even when you're doing a covenant notice, a cure or quit, if you will, when 
you put when when the tenant's doing five things wrong and i'm going to give you an example unauthorized pets unauthorized occupants oh i'm going to give you some good examples and this is helping me for my class for tomorrow so thank you you guys rock the house unauthorized occupants unauthorized pets a late fee and 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 i don't want to do money so let's take away the late fee unauthorized people unauthorized pets and then let's say that they also are growing marijuana in the garage and rerouted the electrical, okay? Because that never happens in this industry, right? <laughs> they put up a video camera system. That never happens in this industry, right? And let's say, oh, give me another one, you guys. Anything that's not they're not, water they're, they're not watering the, uh, the plant. Okay, they're not watering the lawn. Okay, so there's our five things. And you think that the two unauthorized pets and unauthorized people are the most strictest things they're doing wrong. So you don't mention the watering that's on your lease. You don't mention the marijuana grow drug thing going on in the garage because you're not quite sure, but you think that's what they're doing. And what was the other thing I said? Because I already forgot. An unauthorized occupants. Okay, wait. Unauthorized occupants, unauthorized pets. Late fee. Oh, put up a camera system. Put yeah. up a camera system. Okay. So you you only name the unauthorized occupants and the unauthorized pets on the notice. Okay. You get to court and they say, that's not an unauthorized occupant. That's my caregiver. Okay, so now that's gone. And then they say, well, that's not a pet. That's my emotional support animal. Here's a note. Now what? You didn't put the marijuana grow, the dead grass, or the camera system on the notice. So in that event, how is the attorney going to argue that? See the problem? So if it happened, you want to put it on the notices because let the attorney figure out where he needs, what has more teeth. That's not your job. It's not my job. If that's the attorney's job, but what has more teeth and what has more clarity. And if you don't put it on the notice, they can't argue it. So you can't get in there and run your mouth. Here's, a, here's my thing is when you get into a courtroom and you start running your mouth about all the drama that's going on, the court, the everybody in the court does the same thing if you pay attention, especially the judge. They roll their eyes. Oh, here we go. It's a whole nother drama infested story. The reality is everything that happened should be on that notice and the judge should be able to read it. You shouldn't have to reiterate any of it. It should be there. You should be asked questions like, when did you serve this notice? <laughs> How did you serve it? <laughs> you know, things like that, not the content of what's in there. It should be the paragraphs of your lease, of the lease that they violated, and then what they did. So it should have two different sections. And one is where you put word for word what the lease says. And then number two is where you put the story of what happened. So just so you guys all have that concept. We're teaching that class tomorrow in depth and in detail. So if you're interested, please sign up. I believe it's free for paying members, non-paying members, it's 10 bucks. Um, sanitation problem, that would be a three-day curable breach of covenant, um, but it has to be based on the written rules of your rental agreement. So if you have a sanitation problem where they're not keeping the unit cleanly, you have a couple of options of things you can do. Number one, you can give them a three-day curable and ask them to fix it, but here's the reality. Everybody has a different yardstick level of what clean is. Look at me versus is my children, okay? It's a great example of what clean is, okay? Just saying, you can't be doing the white glove test or your version of clean. Um, it's got to be reasonable, okay? So with that being said, remember there's a yardstick there with sanitation. If you really have a problem and you have, and I'll give a couple of examples, I'm not trying to gross anybody out. Um, they haven't removed the trash. There's bags full of dirty diapers. I mean, it's a pigsty in there. It smells. You need to take photographs of that as well. Not only when you initially notice the problem, but also when you reinspect, because it may not 
and this we can't diagnose we're not doctors okay you guys so if somebody actually has some type of uh, mental disability like hoarding pack ratting things like that that needs to be addressed too but on a much different level and we can't diagnose them so we can't say you're a hoarder you're a pack rat you're a so we just have to say that's unacceptable with health and safety issues yada 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 we don't want to get into the finger pointing and the fine detailing it's not our job it's a above our pay grade okay you guys we don't get paid for that so don't go there we want to keep it simple here's the picture <laughs> before and after simply said keep your mouth shut stay away from that drama okay I learned something in court a long time ago and I'm going to say this very carefully. The less you say, the better off you are. When you answer a question, yes, your honor, or no, your honor, and then want to go into detail, stop yourself. <laughs> they don't need all those details. They just want an answer to their question. Okay. There's just like we all have a process and procedure. There's a process and procedure of the court. And when you get in there and start telling the story and running your mouth and doing the drama, you are losing very quickly. <laughs> okay. Cause you're giving too much or it's just so off track from what they're getting at. It doesn't even matter. And you're wasting their time and that makes them frustrated. So I learned in court, don't talk unless you're spoken to keep your answers very simple. <laughs> Um, be honest. I mean, hey, just saying. <laughs> so a couple of things I want to talk about today. <laughs> One of them is very interesting. So please bear with me. Um, apparently there is a business owner manager out there. God love you. That, And I'm going to address this. So love me for addressing this. Um, that threw me under the bus and back back over me. <laughs> and I just want to have a little bit of chat with you. I, at this point, don't know who you are. So you could be on, you could not be on. I have no idea, but I'm going to tell you this. When I tell you that I'm here to help you, I mean that genuinely. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're not worth my credentials. So I will not lie for you. Okay. So don't ask me to, because the answer is no. Nothing is worth my credentials. Just so we're clear. <laughs> Nothing. So when you put on your disposition of security deposit that Patty Widget painted your condo for $3,000 and your tenant called me and asked me for my business license, know this. I don't paint units. <laughs> I don't do repairs. If you needed help with the disposition of security deposit, that's where I come in. It's a tedious process, but it's not a difficult process. It's actually very simple. And I would be more than happy to give you direction in the event that you needed that. But I did tell your tenant that I'd like a copy of the invoice because I was never paid. In other words, be careful. <laughs> you may owe me that painting money because you said I did the work, <laughs> just saying. Um, please don't do that stuff to me, you guys. I get it. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. But I'm here to help you follow the law. End of story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody asked me yesterday, what is it that you do? Well, I'm a property management consultant. Well, explain to me. Here, let me explain. Everybody knows that we all have to stop at a stop sign when we come to a stop sign in the road. That's not giving legal advice. That's quoting what the law says. We all know that's what we need to do. If you get a ticket because you didn't stop at that stop sign, that would be an attorney that helps you with that. Not me. I can't help you. If you need a better process and procedure, like counting to three before you accelerate out of the stop sign so that you don't get the ticket, that's where I come in. I give you a better business practice so that you don't end up in court. Okay, that's what I do. <laughs> I don't give you legal advice, just so we're clear. <laughs> I'm telling you to stop and count to three at the stop sign. <laughs> okay, everybody with me? So now that we all have what I do to help you out of the way and under control, <laughs> I just wanna say, remind you, I'm here. If you have questions, if you need help, I'm here. 
That's what I'm here for. So don't feel like you're alone and feel like you're pressured. That's why we all get together and do this every week so that we can all talk about our challenges and what we're being faced with. Um, I will tell you this. I recently, within the last week or so, went back to Fast Evict so I could help them answer their phones and get them on track with all the changes in the law, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Remember this. How many of us have not been affected by COVID-19? How many of us were not affected? How many of us were affected? Everybody. Everybody, thank you. Even the president of the United States was affected by COVID-19. I didn't say infected, meaning we got sick. I meant we were affected. We either lost work, lost jobs, lost money, lost rents, that would be you as a landlord being affected by COVID-19 if you lost rents, okay? We've all been affected. The way they wrote this new bill, is AB 3088, if the tenant returns the declaration saying that they were affected, the rent is not due until January 31st of next year. 25% of it is due by the end of the month of January of next year. The balance becomes due in February, the very next day, as a matter of fact, and I got a feeling they'll change the law for that. But what I'm trying to say to you is for the longest time, you've called your attorney and you've told your attorney, my tenant's doing this, 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 and this, and your attorney always asks the same question, but are they paying the rent? And when you say, no, they're not even paying the rent, that's what makes it worse. Your attorney says the same thing. Let's not go after all the drama. Let's go after the money. It's the easiest way in California. We've heard that for the last 20 years until September 1st, when the planetary alignment has shifted, okay? That is now the hard way. It's not due until the end of January of next year. Yes, you still need to document that money by all means so that when it becomes due, all your ducks are in a row because you did your job. But in the meantime, what we need to be doing is going into these units. When's the last time you did a routine preventative maintenance inspection or check the smoke detectors? When's the last time you were in there? I have concerns about this. When the rent becomes due, they haven't been calling us for like, what, nine months now? So for nine months, we haven't heard from these tenants, so we're not going in. But if you pay attention, you'll also realize they're also not reporting to you repairs, most likely. We're seeing maintenance requests across the board down 70%. What are they doing in there with all those habitability issues? Are they waiting for the rent to become due so that they don't owe the rent because they have a habitability issue? Just saying. We still have to do our jobs. We still need to do our routine maintenance inspections. Although we can't go pounce on them for the rent, we still need to maintain habitable premises. It's the law, okay? We have to, okay? We have to maintain habitable premises and we have to preserve the right to quiet enjoyment. So we have two things we have to do, whether it's in the contract or not, as landlords, as homeowners. So please make sure you're doing that. In the event you get into that unit and there's a butt ton of lease violations, contact your legal counsel and see if there's something you can do about that. See if within your city, you can base an eviction case on a nuisance because of that. It, again, it's gonna depend on the city, it's gonna depend on the court, it's gonna depend, depend, depend. But that's what your attorney's for is to help you guide through those steps. So make sure you guys are shifting the planetary alignment with the rules or you're going to be hurting really bad. Okay. Just saying <laughs> all residential monies, if they were affected by COVID are not due. 25% is due by January 31st of 2021. And the 75% becomes due thereafter, which would be February 1st. So I don't know about you guys, but some of these tenants aren't sitting on nine months of rent. They're spending it all on Amazon. <laughs> okay, just saying. God knows they may be ordering toilet paper, <laughs> but I think we're past that phase now. <laughs> so with everything that I've said today about 
reconstructing the planet alignments and watching who you throw under the bus. Um, does anybody have any questions for me? I, I have one. Just one? Yeah, <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> um, so and, am I, and I'm kidding. <laughs> um, and maybe, um, maybe it's a comment, I'm not too sure. But in my case right now, I have a tenant that um, I have documented for a nuisance for plumbing because she had clogged the pipes three times beginning last October and ending, I think it was March or April. I'd have to look at my documents. Does that follow under anything? Because it would be a year from April, right? So do I fall? Am I under well, that? Well, can I ask that? a couple of questions? What kind of plumbing are we talking about her plugging up? Is it the toilet? Is it the sink? Uh, toilet. And what is your vendor reporting to you is the cause? Is it too much paper? Is it feminine products? I'm not trying to be nosy. I'm trying to help you. Um, well, the, the third time um, I didn't have to call out a licensed plumber because she'd said that uh, she'd sent the message by mistake. So, um, but I documented it. Um, but the third time it was going to be a licensed plumber because this was not under normal um, warranty. Right. Exactly. So it's all up to what's in that plumbing report. Um, and I'll give you some examples just so that we're all on the same page. If you have a tenant that has long hair, okay, I don't know any of those, and you have to snake their drain twice a year to get all the hair out, um, that would be considered most likely normal wear and tear twice a year is not unacceptable as far as clearing drainage, things of those natures. In the event that my hair was five times this long and you guys were out there every other month, that would be excessive and something that you could contact your legal counsel about and make sure you have those reports from your plumber. Remember, you hire your vendor. They, you, they, you are their boss. <laughs> they pay you. But I'm sorry, I misspoke. You pay them. But what I'm trying to say is it's their report that's going to help you in court in the event that you go that route. So if they just keep saying that they go out there for whatever reason, they need to put excessive hair in the drain or whatever the issue is. So just as much as I could tell you to train your employees, train your vendors too. They also need to keep their mouth shut while they're at a property and their eyes and ears open. Reason being is a tenant is going to open the door for the handyman and nine times out of 10, they spill their guts to him. Okay. I'll give you an example. I had a handyman. No, he was the owner, <laughs> but he didn't want them to know. So he was the handyman. Okay. He always went there and did the work. Well, they'd tell him, we got all these little dogs, but don't tell our property manager. Okay. We don't want to upset him. He's the owner. They don't even know who they're talking to. So, <laughs> yes, we want to remind our vendors to keep their mouths shut. They shouldn't be giving advice to the tenant. They shouldn't even be discussing whatever they're doing with the tenant. They should be telling them, I'll give the report to your property manager. Property manager should be getting back to you. They should not be conversing with your tenant. Their mouth should be shut and their eyes and ears open and they should be reporting back to you. They have 15 dogs, three cats, a Bengal tiger. I mean, what, whatever it is that's going on there. All right, let me see. I thought I saw some other questions come up. Inspections, preventative maintenance. Tenant says that that is harassment. Um, actually, <laughs> last I checked, a tenant wasn't legal counsel. And even if they are legal counsel, they're not your legal counsel. I'm gonna try this a different way, okay? You as a landlord are responsible by law to provide habitable premises, okay? If you don't go in and do preventative maintenance inspections, how do you know where you need to budget for your upcoming repairs? How do you know that you need to paint the eaves on the property? How do you know that it's time to potentially replace the water heater or the garbage disposal or something else that's been giving them trouble? You need to get into the property so you can assess these things, so you can plan for it in your budget, 
or you can have it repaired right away, whatever the issue is. Plumbing, you want to address right away. But again, I'm talking about the eaves on the house. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that we should be painting the exterior of our house every three years, especially on the sunny side of the house where most weather is given, okay? Just saying. <laughs> Peeling, chipping paint is a reason to withhold rent. Okay, if you don't get in there and assess these things, how do you know what you need to do so that you can complete your job? A tenant can't tell you what is harassment. People tell me, well, how many times can I go in there? You better not be going in there monthly. That's ridiculous. Would you want to be spied on monthly? Because at that point, what are you doing? Okay, remember, twice a year is reasonable. When you change the clocks in your house is a good time to remember you should be doing your inspections because we do that twice a year it's also when i change smoke detector batteries on the older systems the newer systems have the 10-year batteries in them but the older ones you change them every six months so that's a good time to do it it's also a good time to get in there and change those ac filters okay <laughs> if they're smoking in a property it's going to be in their ac filter just saying <laughs> that's a violation of your lease, then that's something you want to pay attention to. <laughs> so I don't necessarily feel harassment is you doing your job. If you're going in there for preventative maintenance twice annually, at least once annually, at least once a year. If you're not, how are you doing your job? Based on what they tell you? No. I hope that answered the question and put that in perspective. If it didn't, let me know and I'll attack it from a different angle. Okay. Is it your position as of today, 10-21-2020 to not issue any rent increases? Yes, absolutely. Let's consider that the tenant has not lost income and is still working. So when can it be increased in San Bernardino? Here's what I'm gonna tell you. It is unethical for you to increase rents while we have an order from the government to shelter in place. The entire state is not open. Kids are not back in school. The state is not open. We don't wanna increase rents while we have an order from the federal government to shelter in place, okay? You with me? I get what you're telling me, but it still doesn't make it right. And I don't want you to be involved in a retaliatory lawsuit four years from now because you increased the rent under a government order to shelter in place. Quite frankly, it's not worth it. Okay. We also have to take into consideration throughout the pandemic, we have yet to hear from the Department of Fair Housing over when is a reasonable time to increase rents after a global pandemic and it not be considered retaliation. I'll give you an example, it, or, or terminating tenancy for that matter, okay? We can't terminate tenancy if they have bed bugs or if they call code enforcement or if they call fair housing for six months. What do you think a global pandemic's gonna do? We don't know yet. So why take the risk? I'm all about charging when we can and making sure we stay in the position of power to keep that balance right. I increase my tenant's rent every year by $25 if I don't wanna do an increase just because I can. It keeps me as the person in control, it keeps me as the boss and them as the tenant. That's all that does, okay? 25 bucks does not pay my bills, but it keeps that balance right. If you don't raise it, you don't raise it, you don't raise it, you don't raise it, and then you do, the balance comes out because then they start telling you everything that's wrong in the property because you raised the rent $400. See the problem? <laughs> so you want to try to keep that balance right. I haven't raised any rent since COVID, and I'll probably wait six months after the order to shelter in place before I raise the rent again, just because I want to be completely sure I'm not in a courtroom. I don't like court. Don't, don't get me wrong, I don't mind going, but I don't want to be the one that's on the guillotine, okay? <laughs> I don't want to be the one made an example out of. So you're always going to hear me tell you to err on the side of caution for that reason. If you want to be more aggressive and you want to be more into it, call your legal counsel and ask them. But I guarantee you right now, they're going to tell you, do not raise the rents right now. Because that's what I am hearing across the board. So please call them, see what they tell you, but most likely you're gonna hear the same thing.
don't raise the rent yet. It's not worth the risk. On another note, when you are increasing rents in non-rent control areas, okay, it goes like this, 10% or less is a 30 day notice. They took away our 60 day notice of rent increase in case you didn't know that. Okay, that happened January last year. Last year, maybe it was this year. It was this year, I apologize. They took away our 60 day notice of rent increase. So it is now a 90 day notice for 10% or higher is 90 days for 10% to 14%, anything 15% or higher has to have a 120 day notice. So let me go through the numbers again. 10% or less is a 30 day. 11% to 14% is a 90 day. 15% or higher is a 120 day notice for rent increase. And while we're talking about increasing the rents, might I remind you that we are considered being in a state of emergency right now. A state of emergency does not define an area. It defines a victim. That being said, during a state of emergency, we cannot increase rents more than 10%. If you do, you could be looking at criminal charges. I believe it's a misdemeanor offense. It's $10,000 fine and six months in jail. I don't know about you guys, but I don't look good in orange. <laughs> and that's California Penal Code 396, subparagraph B, just so you're aware. It's not a civil code, it's a penal code. That's right. <laughs> the tenant doesn't serve you a lawsuit. They call the cops, the cops come and give you a ticket or take you to jail, their choice. But I've talked to a lot of them. Most of them say they'll just give you a ticket to appear and you're going to court. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it's not worth it, you guys. It's really not worth it. Okay, hold on. There's a few more questions coming in. Repeat one more time. Okay, so rent increases. 10% or less, 30 day. 11% to 14% is a 90 day. 15% or higher is a 120 day notice for a rent increase. Did you get it that time? If you didn't let me know, I'll repeat it again. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm glad. And don't raise rents right now. It's just not worth it. It's not. I mean, you have to realize something. The statute of limitations is four years. Okay. With that being said, if you have a written rental agreement, your tenant could sue you for four years after they vacate, up to four years. That's a long window of, I don't remember what happened four years ago, but when they vacated, a whole different story. If you raised rents during that time, they could sue you for that plus interest and God only knows what else. Don't open the floodgates for a lawsuit. This isn't what we're trying to do with this pandemic, okay? <laughs> also, for those of you that have applied for a forbearance, and let me repeat that in simple English. Um, you went to your lender and said, or your mortgagee, mortgagor, and said to them, hey, my tenant's not paying the rent because of COVID, therefore I'm affected because they're not paying, because that made you affected. See how that worked? Um, and I'm asking you to defer my payments. Um, the, I'm gonna give an example. Maybe they take six months and you have a 30 year mortgage. Well, now you have a 30 year and six month mortgage because they basically gave you a six month window, if you will, and tag that onto the end of your loan. Why do they do it that way? So they can collect the interest longer. Okay, <laughs> that's how that works. If you received a forbearance from your lender, you have to pass that forbearance on to your tenant. A lot of people didn't get that out of the new AB 3088. Okay, so in the event that you got a forbearance for six months, that means for that six months, you can't get in a lawsuit over money with your tenant for that. You have to give them that six month break also. Okay, <laughs> so just something to think about there before you file legal cases on money. 
Okay, hold on, I'm getting a question. On a property that's been vacant, the rent can be at market value? <laughs> uh -huh. Yes and no. And, and let, me, let me say this, Proposition 21 is up on the ballot for November, okay? Everything that we won in the statewide rent control, Prop 21 is gonna initiate if it passes. It is going to put vacancy D control in there, which basically says you can't raise your rents when the unit becomes vacant except for whatever your rent amount is. So if you are at 5% with a 2.5 cap, that puts you at 7.5% annually that you can increase rents. If they implement this vacancy D control and your rent was $200, and it goes vacant, you can only re-rent it for $200 plus the 7.5% interest or increase. That's it. That's all you can raise it. That would be Prop 21. We want to make sure we vote no on Prop 21. Does everybody got that? No on 21. Tell everybody. So let's go backwards. <laughs> so hold on. I lost my train of thought. Let me just look at the question again. Prop 21 and they got rent. it. B control is what we're talking about. Can we bring it up to market value? If Prop 21 passes, the answer is no. If you're in the city of LA, they have vacancy D control. The answer is no. You can only bring it up plus the market value. So at this point, we don't have any laws that restrict us from that other than California Penal Code 396, subparagraph B, about price gouging during a state of emergency. So in the event, that you have a house that goes vacant during COVID and you bring the rent up to market value, that could be a problem if that person that you're renting to has been affected by the state of emergency. So you wanna be really careful with that, okay? If you've done major renovations in the property while it was vacant, and I'm not talking about paint and carpet, you guys. I'm talking about new cabinets. I'm talking about new light fixtures. I'm talking about you upgraded everything. That would be a reason for your attorney to argue in court. Um, again, not my job, but there are some things that attorneys will argue for you. That's why we like them and we keep them close <laughs> is we're like, hey, what about this? Hey, what about that? Some of it doesn't always make sense to us. And that's what they're there for is to fight for us for what's right. Okay. <laughs> so with that being said, <laughs> um, I would be extremely careful right now raising rents at all. In fact, I'm not doing it for what that's worth to you guys. Um <laughs> And you have 30 days after the state of emergency is lifted before you can increase rents more than 10% and it not be considered falling under um, California Penal Code 396 subparagraph B, which specifically names rental housing is why I keep referring to it. It's the, And I'll give you an example of what they're talking about, just so we're all on the same page. There's a big earthquake and the grocery store is now selling a gallon water jug for 20 bucks a piece. They can't do that. They can increase the rent or the price of goods more than 10%. Okay, so if it's more than 10% increase on water, batteries, you've seen it happen. I know you have. You watch the news. People are trying to take advantage of whatever the crisis is. The law is trying to stop that from happening, and they're stopping it with rental housing as well. I'll give you an example that will really make you go, wait, what? <laughs> So in Northern California, not this past fire season, but the fire season before where so many thousands of people lost their homes. Surrounding areas, one person decided that they were going to raise the rent. Normally, it was about 2200 bucks. I think they raised the rent um, to like 7000 a month for the rent on this property. Their thinking was supply and demand. <laughs> um, they're still in legal, still battling this out. And it's been, they're going to make case law out of it, trust me, because they've been going at it now for over a year. <laughs> um, and we still don't have an answer as to what's going to happen to that landlord. I believe they're looking at three different counts of um, violating that law. So three charges of misdemeanors, that would be a $30,000 fine. I mean, if they're doing it three times and it's 10 grand up to 10 grand each. Um, 
as nicely as I could say this, I see where that owner's mindset was. Because come on, we've all gotten kicked in the teeth when we didn't need to be kicked in the teeth, right? <laughs> and they do it when we're down and it sucks. And there's nothing there to help us. So I could see their point, and I'm being honest here, when they saw an opportunity to make the last bit of, they got a, a way to get a leg up here, I could see why they would attempt to do that. It makes sense when you look at it from human nature standpoint. Um, you don't want to be that person. You don't want to be that person right now why we're in the midst of a global pandemic. You don't want to be that person that's tied up in litigation for years trying to build case law out of which way this should go. That you don't want to be that person. It's extremely expensive. I mean, how much is your legal counsel to defend you for a year? I mean, and this is ongoing. We still don't have an answer yet. Um, that's why I try to get you guys to err on the side of caution. We don't want to be the person setting the example. It's expensive and time consuming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just saying, I'd rather stand back over here, watch what happens to them. And then no, next time, don't do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what will happen to you. So my, my line of thinking is always to err on the side of caution and always to try to use caution and, try to remain as neutral and even as possible. I mean, think about it. How do you want to be treated? Because if you're okay with it, then treat your tenant that way. If you wouldn't be okay with it, don't do it. It makes you look like a jerk. <laughs> we don't need that. We need to keep that balance right. Okay. This is business. Any questions for me? I think I have one. Oh, uh wait, you have already so this one's going to cost you a dollar nick <laughs> i'm kidding go ahead what do you um, got as long as you take uh down payments i can pl i can pay in uh installments well i i let i know we have some new people on here just so you guys know we all have that thing of if i had a dollar for every time somebody mine is said one more question <laughs> So that's my joke is one more question is I wish I had a dollar every time somebody said, I have one more question. Go ahead, Nick. It, it, it's, it's a little off topic, but kind of in the general theme of things. Um, last month I had to hire a pest control company and um, I was told the other day I was on the property that the tenant had moved one of the, one of the boxes, mm -hmm. you know, those, those rat boxes that they put out there because she didn't like where it was at. I haven't done any amendments, nothing like that to anything. Is this a rat box that the exterminator placed? Correct. Okay. She, she didn't like where it was posted, so she moved it. Okay. She's a pain, she's a pain in the you-know-what to begin with. But I, I believe health and safety code for that in regards to, and I believe it's mostly referencing bed bugs. However, I'd have to read the provision, um, and it says something about, uh, the tenant's failure to comply with the exterminator's attempts to correct the situation. Okay. So I can look that up for you, but, and I would have to see if it specific, I know it's there, but I don't know if it specifically references bed bugs or just exterminators in general. If, Fair enough. Yeah. If you give me a number, I'd be happy to look it up. Cause that way I learn is, was there a okay. number? Okay. I give you a few numbers. Right. Look up your bed bug addendum. Okay. okay. It gives you five new civil codes. Okay. One is about when we have to notify them. The second one is about when we have to notify existing tenants. So it's one of the three other civil codes. It has to do with them making their unit available for inspection and complying with the exterminator. So there's three codes. So when you start saying the one about them having to make the unit available, et cetera. That's the one you want to read into. See if it references bed bugs in general or just extermination, because that's going to be room for the attorney to argue in court. Thank you. And it's a big long code. I want to say it's 603.101, 102, 103, something like that. It's three numbers, point three numbers, okay? Thank and you. I believe it starts in the 600 series. Let's see how right I am. Okay. <laughs> So that's Isn't perfect. that bad that I know so much, but my brain can't hold it all? Okay, and I saw another question come through the chat. Let me check it. Back to preventative maintenance. Okay, well, wait, 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 wait. Let me go backwards. On a property that's been vacant, can the rent be 
raised to market value. We talked about that. What can be done about evicted tenant son that continues to break in and inhabit property? Um, call the police right away. They posted that notice um, for no trespass. So if they show back, if he shows back up on the property and the police catch him there, he's going to jail. Simply said. Um, back to preventative maintenance. What notices do we do and what if they refuse to let us in? Uh, your 24 hour notice to enter is what you're going to use. Um, you know, that box that says other on the notice, you're going to check annual or semi annual preventative maintenance inspection. Okay. Um, and if they don't let you in, <laughs> if they don't let you in, it's going to depend on what city you're in. I'm choosing my words carefully um, because that would be most likely be considered a material breach of the lease and a failure to allow entry, which is part of civil code 1947, I believe. Yes, 1947. Um, so if they fail to let you in, it would be a three day curable breach of covenant for failure to allow entry and a new 24 hour notice to enter probably on that third day to go back in. And then if they still don't let you in, um, I would contact your legal counsel to see if at that point you can do the three day quit or if you need to do another covenant notice that's going to depend on the court and the area. Again, I'm not an attorney so I'm not in these courts every day so I don't know LA court needs two covenant notices San Bernardino court needs 15 covenant notices before you can evict and do the three day. So that is where your call comes into your legal counsel. Remember that they're the ones that are in those courtrooms every day. Not me. They're the ones that can answer those questions. Not me. That's legal advice. That's not me. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, no rent increases. Can I remove an amenity of a garage if this amenity is not in the rental agreement is verbal only? You can do a 30-day notice to change the terms because verbal or written, come on, let's face it. You offered them the garage. Now you want to take it away? It might not be right. Um, you may have to do a rent deduction, something along those lines. Usually if there's a garage on the property and it's not mentioned and they are allowed to use it, it is assumed that that is part of their rental property at that point. So that would be a great question for your legal counsel just to know what has teeth and what doesn't have teeth. Been done, police don't come. Uh, they may not show up at the property, but they put an incident number on there. So if you call them, you need to tell them somebody's breaking in, somebody's in there right now. Um, and you need it documented that they're in there, you know. Um, when you start talking to the police and tell them if they don't take care of this, you'll take care of this yourself. Usually that gets their attention. Tell them you want to talk to the desk sergeant or the watch commander if they're not going out there um, within reason. And let me say this, okay? And just hear me, please. If they're dealing with a child that just drowned in a swimming pool and an ex-husband that's holding his wife at gunpoint and you're calling them about some guy that's sitting in a vacant unit, where do you think they're going to go? And where would you want them to go? So don't get so upset with them when you don't get everything you want. We just got to shift gears and try a different approach because what we're doing doesn't work. Call the watch sergeant. Call the watch commander, call the desk commander, call somebody higher up the food chain and let them know, I need help. This is what's happening here. It's ongoing. Maybe they could provide extra patrol. Maybe you could do all kinds of things. Maybe you could set up a camera system so that you could prove that it was him and then show that video to the police officers. Maybe you can figure out a way as we all talk and nurture each other together to get this to stop in a different way. Um, I had something similar happen at a property. <laughs> um, this is in my own arsenal of tricks, if you will. I had somebody that kept coming back into a house that was evicted and this house was cleared out. Locks changed. They knew how to break into it. They lived there for freaking six years. Okay. They knew. What they didn't know is I left my dog there at night. They didn't come back anymore after that. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. So, <laughs> uh, 
Um, did I do anything wrong? No, not at all. Not at all. Three nights, my dog stayed there. <laughs> Three nights. Sure. Problem solved. <laughs> okay. Sure. So I get your frustration. Sometimes we got to not think outside of the box, but get outside of the building. Okay. Just saying. Can you have your dog on a property? Absolutely. It's your dog, it's your property. If somebody breaks in, I have this sign that says, go ahead, jump the fence. It's your ass. <laughs> Okay, so we might have to take a different approach. You may want to consider putting up video surveillance systems. Can I rent your dog? I have a 125 pound pit bull that's afraid of the dark, believe it or not. So you gotta leave a light on for him or he don't like it. <laughs> um, and yes, uh, I would be more than happy to rent the dog. Honestly, I'm gonna tell you, you may wanna put up some video surveillance systems. That way you have video to show the police for the breaking and entering that you're gonna be reporting because that's how we got in. <laughs> okay, so just other things you can do um, to kind of pave the road for them. It also lets them know that it's an ongoing issue and an ongoing problem. He broke in on Monday night, he broke in on Wednesday night, he broke in on whatever night, and you can show that chain of events to them. They may go do some knocking and talking then. It may go from a police report to a detective investigating, who knows, okay? Just saying, <laughs> pave the road. Let them figure out what has more teeth. Not your jobs above our pay grade. <laughs> All right, let me see. I think I saw one more thing come through. Can I rent your dog? Yeah. <laughs> Most people want to rent a little more than my dog. <laughs> I'm a little crazy girl sometimes. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, utilize what other options you have available. I know sometimes it is frustrating. And obviously we want them to keep the peace um, for somebody that actually truly has an emergency before they deal with something that is not emergency. So we have to understand there's a bend there, okay? <laughs> but if you're not getting what you need, again, start thinking outside of the building, not outside of the box. Set up surveillance, a ring doorbell system. Um, it'll, if you put up surveillance, you can hit target areas. So even if they come into the yard, you get notified on your phone. Um, Zomoto does that, um, and you can purchase them through Costco and they're cheap Zomoto. Um, and it'll notify you, oh, somebody triggered this. So you can look and see what's going on before they even get into the unit of who's on the outside of the unit. So let me see, we got a question about a deposit. Question, what's a deposit disposition? Okay, before I read anything else, let me tell you, do not name me as the person that did the painting or I'm going to expect to get paid, be paid. And I'm just playing. Somebody did that. I know. Don't do that. I had a tenant move out of my apartment. There was a stain on the carpet, maybe two by two feet in the living room. But I changed the carpet in the living and the dining to avoid the carpet split. I understand. Okay, hold on, I lost it. What would be the appropriate deduction? I'm making sure to be careful, thank you. <laughs> hey, it's all good. Crazier things have happened to me, okay? <laughs> Trust and believe that. I got stories for days. I'm a lot of fun at parties. <laughs> I got stories that you would be like, wait, what happened? <laughs> what? So don't worry about me, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm a survivor, not a victim. Um, as far as you replacing the stain, if it was uh, seamless and you have the report from your carpet guy stating that they need to replace it because it was one seam of carpet, then so be it. Remember this, they're the professional in the industry, not you. So if they couldn't have patched that in and their only option was to replace that and can to continue without having the seam, then that's their professional opinion. And that's what you would use on your disposition. Um, in the event that it gets challenged, make sure that your vendor is willing to come testify in court for you. That's always something I ask when I'm interviewing vendors. So just something to add to your arsenal because you want somebody that's gonna be there, um, put those teeth in, sign that affidavit, affidavit <laughs> et cetera. So if they'll put it on their invoice, that's usually suffices. Um, but 
again, if it's them telling you that they're the professional, not you, <laughs> you're the professional property manager, not the professional carpet person. So let them take the risk, let them have the liability, let them have the exposure, but put, have them put that on their invoice if that's the case. That's usually uh, justifiable and enough. And in the event you need to ask for a continuance so you can subpoena them to court, so be it. <laughs> you have that capability, okay? <laughs> That's why we use them. Did that do that for your question? And am I driving you guys crazy yet? <laughs> okay, let me tell all of you, we are going with a class tomorrow on paving your way to eviction. So we're doing the class on how to do the covenant notices, the 24 hours, how to build a case based on a nuisance or a problem going on at the property. So they're not watering the grass. The grass is dying. You can't get them to do it. We're gonna pave the road on how you get them to eviction court. Let me rephrase that. How you get them to your attorney to decide whether you can file for eviction or not um, by paving the road to get there. So that's what we're going over tomorrow in detail and in depth. We're gonna go down those rabbit holes of all those weird idiosyncrasies that happen. So please, um, if you're a member, a paying member, um, that is free for you. Just log on for that, um, sign up, obviously. If you're not, I believe we're charging $10, which, hey, this girl's got to eat sometime, okay? <laughs> I'm worth 10 bucks, I promise. Think about it like you're just buying me lunch, okay? <laughs> um, so we do have that. I wanted to tell you guys uh, we are doing that at noon tomorrow. So noon tomorrow on Widget's Way, um, you do need to pre-register. It's like 10 bucks. Um, also, I wanted to let you know, next Wednesday, I am not doing a Wednesday with Widget. So we have no Widget's Wednesday on the 28th. I am actually teaching crime-free housing at the Sheriff's Department that day. So I'm not available. So next week, we have no Wednesday with Widget. Um, if a new law comes out, because God knows they happen, I will do an emergency Wednesday with Widget, but it may be on Friday. We'll do an email blast to make sure everybody knows. If not, we're just going to skip that week. Okay, you guys? Because what do we have to talk about? <laughs> Which way the wind's blowing? But if we get a new law, obviously I'm going to pop on and do everything that I can to explain that to you guys and help you as much as possible. And if we need legal counsel to come in and explain, I have that capability now. <laughs> it makes it easier. So thank you, you guys, for everything. I appreciate you, all of you, um, with your questions. It keeps me on track. And hopefully you'll join us tomorrow so you can learn, learn the way to pave the road when you're dealing with a material breach of the lease rather than money. Because let's face it, right now, the money don't matter. So we need to make sure we have a full understanding of how to build the case the other direction, the hard way, so to speak. <laughs> We're going to do it the hard way. All right, you guys, um, I will not see you next week. <laughs> I will see you tomorrow if you're joining me tomorrow and look forward to working with you continually. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye, guys.